Okay, good morning and welcome to uh, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. We'll pray and start our discussion. Um, anyone would like to pray, maybe from the online batch? Would that be possible? Um, yes, I can pray. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, God, for this day. As we come together for this class, Father, we pray, God, that you um, speak to us. You help us to learn things. We pray also, God, that um, every word and uh, so much of your wisdom you put in uh, and speaking through Nancy, oh Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that we'll be able to receive it and um, we will learn it from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Man, thank you, Ravali. Thank you for leading in prayer. We were at the fourth key and we said, yeah, renewed mind, how we must think the way the spirit of the Lord is guiding us and not be limited just to the natural mind and uh, just to um, the limitations that you know we see around us, but to just open ourselves up uh, for the possibilities. And we saw how uh, in the case of Jesus feeding the 5,000, uh, there is a contrast between the way Philip thought and the way Andrew thought. And Andrew had that possibility thinking, surely led by the Spirit of God. And we saw the multiplication of the bread. Um, and we also looked at the time when Jesus called Peter to step out of the boat and uh, you know he was actually able to walk the first time but the second time because he went back to his natural thinking uh, he was not able to continue so these are things for us to really uh, consider and uh, ask the holy spirit to give us revelation okay now why should we depend on what the holy spirit reveals why should we depend on that Because the Holy Spirit is the one who um, reveals to us the mysteries and the thoughts of God and what he wants. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, so uh, thank you, Rin. So the Holy Spirit is able to reveal the um, mysteries, but most importantly, like what you said, the thoughts of God. So we'll just quickly look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for a bit. Hmm. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 to 11. Oh, sorry, 11, 11 to 16. Okay. <laughs> 11 to 16. Uh, yeah. Would you like to read it out, uh, Prince, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 11. For who among men knows the thoughts of men, except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God, except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who he is from God, that we may understand that God has freely given us what God has freely given us. This is what we speak not in words taught by human wisdom, but in the words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgment about all the things, but he himself is not subjected to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Okay. Yes, thank you. So a lot of, um, you know, amazing truths packed into this one passage. It says so, so many things that, you know, firstly, um, that the Holy Spirit reveals the mind of the Lord because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And uh, even for us, our spirit knows what we are thinking. So in the same way, the Spirit of God knows what He is thinking. So uh, Holy Spirit carries 
the revelation or he carries the revelation of the mind of God. Uh, and then we see in verse 13 that the Holy Spirit, when he speaks, uh, we must receive and understand you know, that uh, spiritual, those spiritual thoughts um, have that spiritual mind because the natural mind uh, its capacity is only for natural things. So with the natural mind, if we try to understand the spiritual things, it won't be possible. It won't be possible. So we need to switch. That's the whole uh, point that is being made. In verse 14, we see that uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, he reveals the mind of God. And uh, the mind of God could be such that for the natural mind, it may be foolishness obviously because god um, he knows all things and he he knows every possibility so what he is suggesting uh, may not be valid for the natural mind uh, so that could happen so we need to make a deliberate choice uh, to walk in the spiritual mind and accept what the uh, holy spirit is revealing isn't it? Uh, and only then we will be able to make those choices deliberately. Like, you know, when we, um, when the Holy Spirit starts to speak to us and tell us what needs to be done to really begin to act on it. I think of people like Philip. They were so led by the Spirit of God uh, that the Holy Spirit tells him, like in Acts 8, we see that, he, you know, overtake the chariot. Or you will see this man and he will, uh, he's reading. Uh, uh, Isaiah, where is he getting all this communication from? The spiritual mind. Okay, so to uh, really function in that spiritual mind is what we are asking for. Uh, let's hope it's fine to function in the natural mind, but as required, we need to exercise that spiritual mind, and that way uh, it'll be easier for us to hear from God, it'll be easier for us to um, know what God is saying right now. Okay? Uh, and, you know, the things that someone was saying this statement, that the things which arise in the heart of God, okay, are so powerful. Uh, and every time we release a word that is genuine, genuine means really it's from the heart of God. For example, like we say prophecy, like you hear from God, right? We hear from God. And uh, when that's an accurate word, it's so amazing because it's it's been born in the mind of God and the Holy Spirit has revealed it to us and our spiritual mind has received it, okay? And then you release that word. It's so powerful if it's genuine. Now, if it's not genuine, now when does that happen? Not genuine? Yeah, if, if it is from our own thinking, it doesn't carry the power because it's just our, maybe our um, uh, wishing well for people that we just say, hey, God is saying this, that. But it's not really originating in the heart of God. So what is what must be our pursuit? Our pursuit must be, uh, I've got to know by by the Holy Spirit what is from the heart of God, what is from the mind of God. So uh, we may say our own thing. Um, there's two ways in which that can happen. One is intentionally, which is so wrong. We shouldn't do that because that is like you're, you're trying to manufacture something that doesn't exist. But the other way is when we are um, growing in our understanding of hearing from God, sometimes, you know, we interpret wrong which I think is okay because it's just part of the learning process and slowly we figure it out and we, we are like, oh yeah, God was saying this, but I kind of uh, heard it this way. I shouldn't have. It becomes a learning experience and uh, you progress from there. But the point that I'm making is the Holy Spirit can reveal the thoughts from the mind of God and that's what we want. We're always thinking, okay, God... What are you thinking? You know, we are curious. What are you thinking? And uh, as long as we are able to gain that and then we move out of that, uh, there'll be a lot of supernatural. Like uh, today in the book of Acts, that's what I was uh, talking about. Like when Paul, he uh, goes from uh, um, 
like he starts off the missionary journey he's at uh, troas and from there he his desire was only to go to bithynia but the holy spirit says no no you go to macedonia he gets a vision and he sees one macedonian man telling him you know please come please help us so these are all the directions of the holy spirit and it's so nice no to see that so many times people were led by what is birthed in the heart of god and uh, there was an impact on every city wherever they went because they were so directed led by the holy spirit the revelations of god and there was so much demonstration of the supernatural so same thing applies to us today uh, we need to train ourselves to hear from god to function with the spiritual mind okay and uh, if we apply only the natural mind the verse clearly said that the natural man the natural mind cannot discern the the things of the spirit the spiritual mind needs to be operational um and uh, yeah ultimately ultimately the good news is uh, this passage closes by uh, paul saying we have the mind of christ okay uh, how can we have the mind of christ because we have the holy spirit who reveals the mind of christ and it's like um, one of those truths of who we are in christ okay we do have the capacity to walk with the mind of god okay i i say that with a lot of humility not that you know uh, we are so proud that yeah we can know what god is thinking it's not like that but there is that capacity to function with our spiritual mind so often that we can know what god is thinking about any and every situation and then move accordingly uh, and there'll be so much of impact so much of fruit uh, so much of the supernatural because you know we are talking about the supernatural um, uh, in in our lives so any thoughts about demonstrating the supernatural through the renewed mind any questions regarding that if you have we can talk about it and then we'll move on to the next key uh, which is anointing yeah uh, ma'am as we are talking about a uh, spiritual mind we are, yes. uh, we have uh, learned that uh, it's only through spiritual mind we can understand uh, the thoughts or uh, what yes. god is saying right. so uh, what are some of the things that we can uh, adopt or we can uh, start practicing to have this spiritual mind okay very good question uh so what are some things we can do to exercise the spiritual mind uh see to exercise the spiritual mind we 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 need to let it work that's what i would say uh because practice is so key because when you go to a passage like there's one in uh, hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14 okay hebrews 5 and verse 14 i'll uh, just share it it says solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so the first portion of what uh, the writer of the hebrews is stating is solid food or full of age referring to mature believers or grown up believers okay in the in the spirit not necessarily age but uh, in the spirit those who are uh, stronger in god who are able to have solid food because in this passage he also talks about drinking milk you know the the pure milk of the word babes so he's talking about a growth that takes place in us spiritually so maturity how does maturity happen uh, he states here those who by reason of use 
have their senses exercised that means what i told you uh, prince the more we operate in the spiritual mind the stronger it gets it's like faith faith is like a muscle we use that uh, analogy the more you exercise the stronger it gets same thing when it comes to the spiritual mind the more you uh, tune in and uh, list, try to listen from god then it's it's uh, it gets faster it gets easier it gets better but also sometimes when we are trying uh, to listen from god like we are in some situations and we are asking for god guidance we want to actually listen what god's instructors what god speaks but at the same time there will be many other thoughts that show up uh, maybe our own experience thoughts yes. that comes from during all these voices how we can actually have like discern yes, yes. this is not from god and this is from, from god. god yeah so uh, in the next section we will consider a uh, scripture uh, but i'll state it now because it's relevant it's 1 john chapter 5 and verse 7 where it says uh, yeah 1 john 5 and verse 7 it states there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the holy spirit and these three are one now let's focus on two parts there the word and the holy spirit and these three are one uh, i think in some translations it says like the word and the spirit agree something to that uh, extent so for us here is here is the understanding so when we keep saying okay you let's practice hearing from god the more you practice the better you hear now it is not separate from uh, knowing the word of god and growing in the word of god because see the word and the spirit they agree right uh, oh yeah so it's uh, not the translation it's the very next verse that says these three agree yeah agree as one thereby the way we look at our uh, senses becoming stronger princes if i want to hear from god um accurately i should get strong in the word so the more i meditate the more i visualize the more i confess i act on the word uh, it puts me in a better position to hear faster or more accurately from god so we can't do this independent of each other so the point you were making is sometimes we have our own thoughts sometimes we have some distraction how do we know which is god which is not but the more well versed you are in the word it becomes easy to eliminate so that's how it is so you can yeah yeah correct correct Correct. So, yeah. Uh huh. I know. I know Prince's personal life. Okay. Okay. I know what he's going through. Okay. I was praying for him. Yeah. So I have all these thoughts in my mind because I know him. Yes. If I get something from God, I mean, how can I decide like it's from me or it's from God? Mm. For for the random people and all, if we go and pray, maybe if we see something, if we sense something, we can. directly can say very yeah. boldly yes, because we yes. don't know about them we got this correct if if come to a known person yes then how we can discern uh so see um in this we usually uh, say something practical which is if you get a uh, an impression or a prompt or a uh, you know a word from god when you're not looking for it uh generally it must be god because you're not premeditating it for example uh if i am thinking if i'm thinking about my sister and uh, then i get something about her it could just be psychological because i'm so worried about them that i'm getting my mind is working overtime and i'm getting a picture or a, it could be okay uh, but let's say uh, i'm just driving okay and i'm thinking about uh, this class 
and suddenly i get an image about my sister it's out of the blue out of the context so most likely uh, i can accept that because it's not from my psychological mind okay so yeah that helps that is uh, uh, one thing yeah when you're praying for that person correct so uh, when you're praying and when you're uh, intentionally seeking for a word at that time also what one practical thing i've heard people say is the first thought you get you receive that and go with it okay uh, because like if you if you think too much about it like some thought comes to your mind as a word from god we sh- we should develop that ability to pick up that first thought i i don't know how else to explain it to you but i hope you are understanding what i'm saying uh some way you get to know anand that it's not you and as i said the more you practice you'll know hey wait a minute that's me sometimes i get that i get an arm pain i'm like that's me <laughs> it's not a word prophetic word for anyone so i better not call this out but then there are other times when uh i i sense something and i'm like hey no this has got to be a prophetic word i have to call this out so you'll get to that place so keep practicing but practice will help a lot just step out just step out just begin to take the um uh, like be bold will we make mistakes what do you think yes we will okay but uh, we can do our best as much like integrity of heart no to the best knowledge that i know i've done all the elimination in my head according to the word according to the psychology everything and then when you after that also you feel yeah this is it go for it and then it just gets better and better i hope there's some uh, uh, actually what you said is true like uh-huh. that yes like it's okay to start acting on that ஆரிட்டி Uh, i'll just, just state that for the online students so what anand is asking is when people are familiar uh, we have concerns to hear from god for them because we don't know whether it's just our familiarity that we are speaking out of uh, but you know uh, i would say uh, that uh, even when it comes to prophesying and all right what we usually say is go to somebody that you don't know and then you pray for them because you can just avoid that bias but there will be those rare occasions where there is no one else to pray for that person and you have to pray and you still have to trust god to get a word for them yeah yes francis ma'am you said like thinking about one person is mm-hmm. more on is get a thought is according to psychology mm-hmm. uh, so like i know one thing like uh, is mind reading mm-hmm. I, i don't know i learned about that okay. what is that Uh, oh. so i talked with one of the uh, counselor who okay. is he she is a pastor mm. so she said uh, mind reading mm. and is not the concept of bible mm. and psychology is not uh, including including yeah reading mind mm. okay. is coming under the hypnotism and all mm. so mm. how is it is like if you are thinking about one person mm. if is not coming from god yeah like yeah. is it do you want to give something i asked yeah so i would say that francis see because psychology is still scientific and logical okay anything that goes out of the boundaries of logic uh is uh you know either supernatural the good part which is from god or it can be from the demonic so obviously when we look at scripture always go back to the word of god always go back to the nature of god let's think is there any instance where god lets us read other people's minds no not at all not at all prophetic is different it's not mind reading so therefore we can conclude that it's demonic yeah 
So better to stay out of those things. Which one? Hmm. Biblical counseling? Uh -huh. How is biblical counseling? Uh, you mean to say that when we are counseling someone, we will understand them a little bit and guide them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how do we do that is, uh, of course, we have to use both natural and spiritual mind. So natural mind will give you some logical answers. Like, huh? yeah, out of logic is from the right supernatural. That is God's source. Whatever we said now, the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God and he reveals to us, we have the mind of Christ. So access into the right supernatural and uh, uh, do it. Yes. Uh, uh, regarding Anand's question, ma'am. Uh -huh. Uh, wait, like, like it's happened sometimes. Like, yeah. when we uh, my question is like, uh, sorry, I'm taking uh, my question is like, uh, if we know someone, mm -hmm. like, if I know one person is going through one loss, yeah, uh, if I go and pray, mostly it's because I know what he's going through, that's why we're going to go and pray, and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily. Can is from God telling me to go and tell he is mm. going through this. I already know what's going he's mm. going through. Yes. But still I feel like to go and pray for him mm. over the situation. So uh, when we are praying that we receive some words like mm. or uh, even before going also pray, we know that his situation. Mm. And so we get some like we're like, okay, I will go and encourage him with yeah. these words. So uh, will it comes under this uh uh, prophetic word, yeah, or it's not out of our own uh, emotion, or uh, we mm. feel that connection with them we are giving, or mm. it's actually God is also using mm. the knowledge that we have to yeah, speak to, to speak that to person. The person. Yeah, so the checks just to be careful, we can have checks on both sides. We ourselves can check. That's what I told. No, the more we read the word, um, the more we practice the the prophetic, then we'll we'll come to know to the best of our knowledge what we are sharing is a prophetic word. Okay, so we'll do that and then we'll share it. But you can also put a check on their side and say, this is what I'm feeling. Um, uh, you pray for a confirmation. So if you put it that way, uh, then what happens? That person will not take your word as the final, which is actually good. Because then they will trust God for a confirmation. And when the confirmation happens, they'll act on it. So it's safer. So why I ask this, like, um, some of the times when someone comes and uh, mm -hmm. pray for us or someone asks us to pray, yeah, uh, we'll actually ask them, do you have any request to pray for? Mm -hmm. And when we know their request and when we are praying for, <laughs> we'll be releasing some words. And correct, they correct. To yeah. So I have actually asked, uh, as I've heard some pastors say, that, huh? No, not Paul. Uh, There's another pastor I used to know. Uh, he would say, don't let them talk. <laughs> like, you know, if they're saying prayer request, keep it minimum. Uh, sometimes what happens is, you know, people will say so many things. They'll say, uh, I have a fracture. Uh, I was just going out of my house. I went two steps ahead. I opened the gate. Like one full narration will happen. You're like, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, what else? So then what happens? Your brain, your everything starts to work. Uh, so he used to say, don't listen. Just ask what? Pray for? Pray for your, pray for your fracture. Okay, come, let's pray. <laughs> so that way, just to avoid the that psychological bias. Uh, somewhere I believe it, somewhere I practice a little bit of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. You guys will have a baby, uh, he prophesied. Then after that, he prayed. Those people told like, no, pastor, we are not husband and wife, we are brother and sister. Mm. He got shocked from next time. He was he was asking, what's your prayer request? Oh, like that, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Correct. Assumed. 
she was going to have yeah yeah so correct so fair enough fair enough but you know the point that i'm making is uh to minimize the knowledge of the you know like who they are and the kind of person they are to minimize the knowledge of that but even when it comes to releasing the prophetic word we have we we share this in understanding the prophetic that uh, we need to ask them i sense that you know i sense that uh, maybe uh, you praying for a child so when you com- communicate it like that uh, does it make sense you're giving that person an opportunity to check whether what you're saying is right or wrong so moving away from that says the lord you are going to japan pack your bags <laughs> <laughs> you know there are very rare occasions when we do that because maybe for somebody god wants to get their attention unless you say that says the lord they won't listen <laughs> right and god may give us that thing to say come on this is the time you have to say that says but 99% of the time the way we prophesy is um uh, have any one of you been praying for a child you know like basically you want to say that god is going to give you a child but to communicate it present it in a better way to reduce error so yeah but so no i think like, mm. yeah 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 but you on say say no that's the interest like what like yeah what is saying like this ha uh, to see safe side or aggressive um it depend basically the communication is what we are talking about if god gives a word if god gives a word we definitely have to act on it right either we pray through that word or if god uh, impresses us to release it then we release it and the miracle takes place or you know whatever uh, there is direction there's healing there's deliverance so you've got to act on it either way either by praying about it or by telling the person uh, but yeah you have to act on it uh, now how you present it whether you're presenting it in what you're saying aggressive or you know safe it's up to you i most of the time i try to be super safe <laughs> but it's still prophetic yeah, yeah. yeah it can still be prophetic yeah. when we directly say like this is like this is like and if it's not yeah like sometimes it affects people's faith yeah yeah <laughs> oh controversial topics yeah elections and like how people i mean this this big church pastors and all interpret about this uh, politicians and it won't happen i mean for sometimes it won't happen mm. and some say, sometimes it will happen because they they'll know all the uh, an analysis and all mm. the because of see it it yeah. happened before also in our state mm. he was prophesying on a big crusade mm. like one one party leader came and he was saying your party leader will become a cm next year Mm. like i mean how come i mean yeah. is that good like it's it's some way uh, if it is not happening people there will be so many people who used to mock us like mm. you you said on the stage yeah it, so uh, see where, when we talk about the prophetic understanding the prophetic um we will talk about uh, levels of progression Uh, where you have something known as a simple gift of prophecy More, all of us as believers can operate in the simple gift of prophecy which is first corinthians 14:3 uh, exhortation edification and comfort to people when we prophesy okay but then there are other levels like um, uh, grace gift of prophecy and then the office of a prophet so usually when it comes to uh, speaking to leaders speaking to nations and all uh it tends to be the responsibility of the prophet generally god will reveal to a prophet whoever is functioning in that office so uh also there's a lo- whole lot of other things about the wisdom to communicate it and and all so my point that i'm making is we must stay away from these kind of uh, prophecies 
uh like even if you are sensing something you just pray about it because we we are not uh, you know in that office of a prophet or anything to go and communicate it in public you know what i mean and it creates so much confusion now maybe the people who were speaking these things uh it could have been a true revelation uh but maybe they could have prayed about it or personally communicated to the individual concern that i sense this pray about it work towards it something like that and left it there but when people bring all these prophecies to the public space okay uh it's not very judicious or it's not very discerning and it creates a lot of confusion so most of the time confusions have happened because of this okay so yeah but if someone's in the office of a prophet and then god is revealing these things there is a way to communicate as a way to communicate and it can be done rightly because yes god can communicate why not and predict who is going to be the leader and and the one of the things so in this case the ministry was just not by i'm not a christian i'm saying the i'm i'm hindu i'm saying in this perspective so i'll summarize mostly, yeah mostly the ministry being not this is super natural Yeah, yeah. The person, the person who says the full word, true word, they won't be being formed by the. Hmm. The people who are doing this supernatural ministry. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Other Christians we know how powerful it is. Correct, correct. Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, Anand's question is, uh, um, people who flow. in the supernatural ministry uh, are mocked when things are wrong like uh, things don't happen or uh, there's a false prophecy yeah okay so uh, how do you how do you understand this uh, so as i told earlier anand there is going to be a little bit of uh, practicing exercising our senses where uh, being you know being um, sincere even though you're being sincere some mistakes might happen okay uh, so the way we look at this is we won't immediately call them you know false prophet or uh, false pastor uh, reason is mistakes can happen from all people okay uh, so like even let's say in teaching we have seen uh maybe there are there have been teachers of god's word who initially said that uh, there's nothing like the supernatural there's nothing like the baptism in the holy spirit and then when they get the revelation of of that then they say i'm changing my teaching about the holy spirit yes there is a baptism in the holy spirit but we don't call them false teacher no because over a period of time they have they have grown they have developed they have matured uh and they ha- they have understood the doctrine clearer right so even teachers sometimes their stands about some matters change as they understand the word better you got it but we don't accuse them as false teacher but i think the supernatural people have a lot of interest for the supernatural so it gets noticed faster and uh, when something goes wrong people start accusing and saying what you pray nothing happened no healing happened you prayed and this person died you know <laughs> such comments people make uh, but i yeah yeah so these things could happen and uh, as i we discussed earlier there can be so many reasons for why something went wrong but when people are accusing they don't think of all that huh Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. Sure. So, um, Anand is saying that uh, some. Uh, pastors or preachers they'll just stick to the word 
they'll not explore the supernatural because it's too risky uh, they'll get a lot of feedback they'll get a lot of uh, attention but i think somewhere we have to take the risk anand because we have to go by the word jesus taught and he demonstrated uh the supernatural so it was part of his ministry and he told uh, us also we went through that initial thing right the invitation where even we you shall do greater works than these so we carry a mandate just because people say uh people accuse uh we should not go away from it but i get your point of how uh sometimes the way it has been done is not very nice which is why people have uh their reservations for the supernatural because they didn't exp they didn't have a good experience <laughs> when it comes to the supernatural it's not like because 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 these things because these things are not like they are using god is there where under they won't be no one will come and they just is an and if you do that and these videos come out like like uh, I mean, I don't know how the, I mean, how much you know, this is happening and going on Christian pastor. Okay. It's, it's like, like nothing. Oh, okay. I see. So, um, okay, so the thing is, uh, like when a mistake happens, uh, not even a mistake. Even a mistake. Uh, so, uh, uh, oh, if, if just the manifestation, just the supernatural. Uh, yeah, yeah, tongues. Yes, 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 yes. So this, 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 we do run the risk of being mocked uh, uh, anand but the point i'm making is we can flow in a very honorable way and in a very wise way you got it so when we are uh, practicing let's say the gift of tongues usually how do we do it it's in our circle understood so that we we need that discernment we need that discernment yes of course sometimes there will be some public meetings but uh, when we have uh i'm using the word practiced now that you all know what it means when we practice in these safe circles and we go out there in the open maybe i have to preach in a crusade at least i'll have the wisdom to know what to say know what not to say or how to release the prophetic word how not to release who to release the prophetic word to who not to so when we operate with wisdom even for the supernatural somewhere you need that uh then we can escape at least try to escape most of uh, these uh, you know people who are trying to catch you mm. yeah that's so, like uh, his uh, question is from some people will be uh, doing keeping all this uh, healing and deliverance or like maybe are uh, casting out demons yeah. they will be taking all this and they will be uh, uploading in their uh, profiles and some people all these people some uh, yeah. they will be taking uh, they will be creating a uh, uh, memes on it or uh, oh, what we oh, doing oh. on it so I like uh, is it needed <laughs> we need to do it cuz uh, people who are gentle like christians we know it yeah. but people other people who don't know what we are doing take it and make fun of it so mm, is it not mm. dishonoring or uh, yeah it will definitely or? see if we are working if we are not discerning and um, it's giving more and more opportunity for uh, mockery then it is dishonoring god so i think as god's people we need to take a stand and have that wisdom to say uh, maybe certain things don't need to be published it's it's we we'll practice it in our uh, christian uh, like our churches and all that and uh, something that's very verified so i don't know if you all have noticed like even when it comes to testimonies and all at apc we are very careful so we won't just randomly say literally a person would have emailed so we have the date of the email everything they themselves from their email id they have emailed you then yes of course it's come from someone and usually you know uh, it will be like um, the doctor said or some confirmation uh, 
uh, that's when we will actually read it out so about every matter if we are going to be little more judicious wise then it'll create more and more of an atmosphere of faith and a lesser and lesser an atmosphere of uh, you know doubt mockery so that's our responsibility as uh, leaders and believers mm. yes Okay, okay. So even friends, close friends are uh, seeing all these things and they are interpreting. Okay. Okay, so it, it's leading people away from God. How about we uh, we pray and we uh, pursue God and uh, we try to become that testimony of people who are uh, uh, strong in the word and strong in the spirit. So they can see that, yeah, you this person can be so sane, but this person is also talking about the supernatural. So there must be something to it. So I think you have a great task yeah. ahead of you, Anand. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Can we take one last? Question? We can take only one last question. Three <laughs> minutes left. <laughs> yeah. uh, as we are speaking about spiritual mind and yes. uh, doing prophetic things, you told we need to practice and we mm. need to exercise. So, is it okay or uh, can we uh, start practicing on ourselves, like mm. prophesying for ourselves? Mm -hmm. like Prophes one example mm. I give, like. Uh, mm. For me, most of the times, uh, it's like a prayer and also sometimes it's like uh, I mm -hmm. declare by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll play these you know, games on mm -hmm. Saturdays when we have end game. Mm -hmm. When we are holidays, uh, we will be uh, mm -hmm. playing. For me, the best setting to practice prophetic and to receive God, I feel like it's the same. Because uh, uh, I actually ask God, what is the last God I'm going to put end with? Because you know. Okay. And sometimes it happened for me and sometimes I just prayed for other people like, mm. okay, if we're going to finish the game, what the color of the card it will be. I prayed actually to be <laughs> frank and okay. I got the color. I told them, Okay. I, but even when I told, I'm not sure. I told you will end with this red color card. And actually when he finished the card, it was red actually. Okay. okay. See, so is it actually uh, yeah. acceptable to practice that way? Yeah. Or? So when we say practice, it would be good to practice it in the context of, um, uh, you know, like uh, following God and uh, serving people. So more in terms of, you know, uh, praying for them, hearing from God for them that way. Okay. So uh, when you say for myself, uh, that's revelation. That's not prophecy. Like if I, if God reveals something to me, um, uh, that's revelation. That's different. Okay. Now, when it comes to things like a game and all, <laughs> I would be a little skeptical about it because, um, uh, I mean, what's the objective of the game? Ultimately, it's to, to win, right? So then when you're asking God, okay, show me, show me, it doesn't sound very edifying, exhorting or comforting <laughs> to the other person. So I would... Maybe you can practice in another context, is <laughs> what I would suggest. But uh, uh, Ravli is on this call. Ravli, you remember that uh, phone story? Uh, I don't know if you're able to speak, but maybe I can share. So it was weekend school of uh, prophetic ministry. Uh, you're okay if I share it? Okay, I already mentioned her name. She should be fine, I guess. So what happened after the prophetic uh, school? Uh, there were a lot of people. So those of us who had gone to share, we were praying for the people. And uh, I think there were a lot of participants and Ravli was also there. And her phone hung. There was some issue with her phone. She said, can I have your phone? I have to make a call. It's urgent. So I just gave my phone. But I didn't tell her my, uh, like I had a, uh, what do you do? Like a picture password. I didn't tell her my password uh, because I was so busy praying, right? And I'm going on praying, praying, praying. And I forgot about my phone. I forgot everything. 
after the prayer was over i went to apologize to her i said i'm so sorry i gave you my phone but i didn't tell you my password she said i already got it <laughs> i was like oh, are you serious you got my password she says yeah i opened your phone i made the call it's all done <laughs> i was like but how apparently she just like prayed and she got some sense and she did that she opened it <laughs> i was like god it's not fair but you know what i mean god honors our faith that is there but these are all controversial spaces to get into yeah so just stay away <laughs> don't try to ask god for people's passwords yeah just fyi okay so we are up time is gone <laughs> as usual okay okay i'll consider doing a thursday class when uh, one hour is available from whose class pastor paul pastor paul's class okay sure i'll let you know uh, early next week okay i hmm. um yeah we can try that but i think the learning is part of uh, asking sure so sure. mm good so shall we pray and close then okay now who would like to pray Lord, thank you for this uh, time that we have uh, to uh, in this class, Keys to Supernatural Ministry, and uh, and Lord, how you work in and through us, Jesus. And Lord, I pray that um, we would um, become more sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit will reveal to us your thoughts and uh, your mind, Lord Jesus. And um, God, I pray that uh, we would grow spiritually, uh, we would be strengthened. Um, and I thank you uh, that we had such a good time in this class. And uh, I thank you that you bless this day. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. And uh, today I will post an uh, um, assignment. Okay. And also uh, I'll post the final assignment early enough so that you have sufficient time to uh, do it. So, yeah. All right. Have a blessed day. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you all on the call as well. God bless.